Kalbunga y'all, Captain Beardo here. Sorry I haven't been uploading as frequently as I should be or anything like that. I've been either busy or just very anxious and I want to produce the best content for you guys, so pardon me for that. But yeah, I've been working with my church for editing and things like that for their church services on Sundays. So I'll probably leave a link somewhere on my channel. So you guys can see the sermons and things like that from my church. And then that's been a blast, and which has been a blessing. But because of, I've been editing there, I haven't had time to edit my own videos for this channel. That, and I also have plans for, in the works, for another ch channel that's, in that channel is actually under construction right now. I have, I'm getting art made and getting things finalized and all that stuff. So be on the lookout for announcement videos for that. With that being said, let's get into the video. So, Captain Beardo here. Let's get into the review, the first review that I'm going to be doing. So, recently, this past month, of the month of June, I, my friend was doing a day-by-day -day film challenge where like a certain day would be like, oh, to comment the, one, the movie that made you angry or the movie that made you want to fall in love. So, I went ahead and kind of like followed him through Instagram and kind of every day that he posts, I posted a movie that I did and kind of did a film challenge with him a little bit. And because of that, I felt, I figured this video would actually be a good video for me to start making on this channel. And therefore, that's why I'm going to try having Mondays for the next foreseeable future as long as I can go. So that's going to be the challenge for me is to be able to review a new movie for you guys every single movie every single Monday that I have not seen or a movie that I really like and etc etc and post it for you guys right here so that's gonna be my own film challenge and hopefully you guys like these videos comment down below if you do and if you have any movie suggestions or anything like that you can go ahead and just leave it in the comment section in this video or any video I post during this week, next week, so on and so forth, or any pictures I post on Instagram or Facebook if you're friends with me personally or anything like that, just leave comments there. Or any, yeah, just anywhere they can pretty much leave a comment. I should be able to read it. And I appreciate all your guys' comments. But today, we're going to be, we're talking about the 4th of July that happened this past weekend. And... I've never seen Independence Day. I know, I know. Blasphemy, shocker. But, I just never, I've seen a lot of movies. But Independence Day was one of those that, around the time I was born, because I was born in 97, so. Somewhere around there, I think 96, was when the film came out. And obviously, I was not born until 97. So I've never been able to see it in theaters, because it, it came out about when I was too young or not even born yet and then because of that every 4th of July I know a lot of people would recommend it to me things like that but I just never have seen it just because typically 4th of July goes to the fireworks but blessing in disguise with what's going on in the world right now I was actually able to sit home and we didn't have fireworks here in my town so we were able to just sit I was able to sit with my mom and watch Independence Day with her, and I was like, "Hey, I want you. I want. I want to review this movie." So that that's kind of why I haven't watched it, and now I'm reviewing it now. And I've never seen any trailers. I've only seen maybe a glimpse of the movie on television or wherever, just glimpses of it. All I knew going into the movie was Will Smith was in it, The Fresh Prince. And that's about it. And man, I am really upset with myself that I've never seen this movie before. I really want to see it in theaters now. Because it was a good movie. Because right at the very beginning, it does some really good foreshadowing epicness with it just panning over the moon. 
showing America's greatest accomplishment, which is walking on the first people on the moon, walking on the moon. And then all of a sudden you see the footprints kind of starting to get e erased by something like shaking it, shaking the ground, things like that from up above. And then all of a sudden you just see a, the shadow of the spacecraft. And I was like, dang, this spacecraft is huge. It cuts down with the people reading the scans and things like that, and <laughs> they're playing golf. It it's very humanizing to like of people and things like that. This whole this whole film does a really good job about like showing who people are with their day to day life and things like that until the aliens obviously get there. And so like you get the golf golf balls and then you get the like the sergeant or the man in charge tripping on the golf balls. And then you even get the first, in the introduction of the president, he's waking up with his wife phone call and then you have his daughter in the bed with him and it's just cute like really cute and really special scene to see and then like they do that with every single one of the char main characters you see that with even Russell you see that he's a family man you see his kids things like that even though he's a drunkard and he just kind of got screwed over because of the aliens or he believed in aliens before they got there and all that stuff. And, but yeah, every single character, even Will Smith's character, who doesn't come in until like 30 minutes within the film, he's seen being like with family and things like that. And so it's a very much like family oriented movie that you can probably have with any family. Like you can watch it with it, your family and everything like that. And it just kind of like resembles like human values slash America's values with that because this is the 4th of July movie. So I just thought it was really cool that they were able to encapsulate like who like these people were with the families that they had it. And if they didn't like Jeff Goldblum's character David you can tell that he's upset that he's divorced. He's kind of trucking by and things like that. He's watering plants. You kind of like see a glimpse of him watering his plant. Yeah, but he has a best friend, and he's just kind of, like, being the cable guy. But, yeah, so, like, the whole first 30 minutes is just nothing but epicness and seriousness between the government and their, what they see the aliens coming through. And, like, the, it, it's really weird to me that the aliens, that they didn't see the aliens until they got to the moon. It's like, okay, but... Sure, it might like it could just literally just the script or because of lack of technology that they could have had for them to like see the aliens pass them in. But so it's like if there's something coming towards you, wouldn't you be able to see it pass them in? But anyway, that's like that's just one minor nitpick I had at the very beginning. But other than that, it's like it it went from humans being humans. To aliens being massive, like the spaceships being massive, and just destroying whatever humans created and things like that. And then 30 minutes in, you get Will Smith's character, the Captain Hiller. You get Captain Stephen Hiller, and he's he doesn't even realize the aliens are there until he looks up from his newspaper and goes, "Oh, there's aliens." Same with Jeff Goldblum's character. He. he doesn't know what's going on until he looks at the TV because his best friend tells him to. It's just really funny like how it's a commentary on how humans can be with we're so focused in on our work and that we don't actually realize what's going on until someone nudges us in the right direction or we notice it. And yeah, I really like each one of the characters that they set up. They all had different back backstories from what we could tell within the, within what they're doing, like slightly watering, like a watering plants, Will Smith waking up and saying hi to that kid, or the president waking up with his daughter, and just kind of like, or even like the Russell flying the plane with his kids arriving there, and he's kind of like drinking that 
bottle of whiskey. You can act, like you really tell who they are from the beginning, and then the story progresses. Like you, they go to Area Fifty One, find out that they've been keeping a spaceship there, while Will Smith is his character is flying in the jet, and like shooting like aliens or whatever and then I really like the part where he gets out of it like since he's like ejected or whatever because of the spa the alien space crap shot at him he gets out he meets up with the alien and just straight up punches it in the face I really thought that was really funny and it's like yeah anyone would do that pretty much just because it's like really <laughs> you're, you're welcome to America pretty much and then that was his clearance into uh, Area 51. And I just thought it was really weird how Area 51 already had a spacecraft, like a 10-year-old spacecraft or 20-year-old spacecraft there from the aliens. And yet, even the president didn't even know about it. And then they had like three different aliens called the Freak Shows, which is, I, I liked it. It was good storytelling and whatever. It was a way to progress the film and everything. And then another good thing I did like about this movie that kind of gets mimicked now, like throughout cinema, is the whole alien dissection scene. It reminds me of Spider-Man Two, where they're dissecting on Doctor Octopus's tentacles, and then all of a sudden, it, like comes back alive and attacks him. Thought that was a really cool sequence with him. It depends to with the alien sort of move its hand, and all of a sudden it comes back alive with its sonic telekinesis abilities I did really like that and it is like the, it shows that this cinema this film is really has a role within cinema as a whole and art and it kind of helped progress things along for films like Spider-Man 2 or other films to kind of mimic certain or certain aspects of of it to continue making great films. One thing I I do I did know here is they decided they were like, oh, don't shoot guns, and it's like obviously yeah, you have to tell people not to shoot guns because we can see through the guns that we're in, you kind of have to tell people like, hey, don't ride, don't shoot guns because you're going to start an intergalactic war. So it's kind of funny on that part. But then they straight up go with this helicopter with this helicopter with lots of lights and it's like oh you're going to send up the welcome wagon okay and they're going to probably kill us because you're just going to sh show a lot of lights at them and sure enough spaceship by spaceship that got in position to blow up where they're going to blow up they blow up everything and they of course blew up like every big main building that we know of, which is, I thought it was kind of weird that it wasn't big buildings, it was well-known buildings that we know of, like the White House, things like that, it's like, I, if I was if I was an alien, I would have gone for, like, one of the biggest places or inhabitants there are, and just blow the, those places up, but I digress, it's really cool sequences, like, the explosions were really cool. All that stuff was really cool. The dog fights in this movie were really, really cool to see, even though it's like, huh, aliens would go chasing after the pilots and shoot, try shooting at them. And then, of course, they have a space shield because pretty much any spacecraft should have a space shield at that point. And so they weren't able to do whatever they're doing. And then <laughs> I love the the fact that at the very end, they decide to, Jeff Goldblum's character, Dave, he decides to go, well, I can, I can create a virus that will completely wipe out their communications and then we can win this victory and everything like that. And sure enough, they're able to go straight up there and the virus is what saves the day. It's just by them somehow knowing how to hack in and send a virus into a highly sophisticated spacecraft to make it to where they can infiltrate it, blow it up, and send them running and win, which is uh, like, okay, Jeff Go I guess Jeff Goldblum's character is smart. They mentioned that, but at the same time, it's like, 
would anyone actually be that smart to be able to make a virus like that that can be able to up with alien tech? Just interesting, but still, execution was very well done in that regards and everything like that. And I did men- write down that I love that they had cigars and to kind of celebrate and things like that. And then the Russell, I liked how he's like, he says, hello boys, I'm back. And then he like, obviously like, goes on like a suicide mission, kind of blows himself up to kind of like save the day. But every single character, from what I could tell, did have some sort of a character arc. That kind of like progress, like to progress the movie. They didn't. They weren't the same character from the beginning. They changed throughout. Like Will Smith's character, Captain Steven, he ended up getting married to the girl, with and becoming good friends with David. David was actually becoming something, using his smarts, and actually becoming something that he kind of wished that he was instead of the cable guy. You got Russell, who was kind of like a drunk crazy person who turns into a hero and that stopped drinking and things like that for his kids and his family. You got the president who who was a president. <laughs> kind of, he, he had a, some sort of an arc. I didn't really write it down, his part down or anything like that. But throughout the whole thing, I was like, yeah, checks that off for me. Checks that off for me of like what good film does, what good art does, things like that. It's a beautiful movie. All the action pieces are beautiful. Even with Captain Steven's girlfriend at the time's dog running from the explosion or jumping from the explosion, that was a cool scene. Really shot beautifully. And it's it's a really beautiful movie, a really good movie, really entertaining. Just weird that Will Smith's character didn't show up until 30 minutes into it. Because there's like a lot of um, build up coming to that point. But still, I didn't feel like any any scene was necessarily needed to be taken out or they should have changed anything with it. It was pretty well straightforward for the time and everything like that. I just have a few nitpicks and that is with some of the explosions you can kind of tell it was like CG, but at the same time, it's like that's all they can work with with the time period and things like that. That in the nineties, anyway, <laughs> that it came out in, and then like certain plot points, like oh, they were able to upload the virus. It's like oh, okay, I guess, but again, it's fiction, so give it a pass. So with everything said, I would give this movie. The rating of, dang, that beard, thick, with two C's. And without further ado, if you like this video, please leave a like. Comment down below your rating of what you thought of this movie and any suggestions for future movie reviews. And subscribe, ring that bell, it'll help me out. I'm trying to work my hardest to get the best quality content for you guys. Without further ado, feel the beard and deuces.